Ciarán Corla, Sinn Féin tabled our motion of no confidence in the government opposite because we believe that change is needed now more than ever. The government uh, across uh, in the, those, those benches is out of touch, clearly out of ideas and now out of time. A government that is unravelling before our very eyes. You've lost the support of the people, if indeed you ever had it. And last week, you lost your dull majority. And now, Taoiseach, you scramble to get the votes to win a confidence motion. The writing is on the wall for you. This failed government should go. You should go now. And you should make way for a government that will finally put workers and families first. Tan real to shag titamasa kela dira os or gore. Heper, hurch ernerodia to fear havok to the guini, to taki the guini kaija agus to trumluk na dola kaija to shay in aum, egan real to snav kushuk sha on valak a ogol. And it's not hard to see why this coalition is coming apart at the seams. It is a government that has presided over two years of utter and abject failure. Not only has this government failed to make improvements in the areas that really matter to people, but you have in fact managed to make a bad situation so much worse. This is especially true in housing, in healthcare, and in dealing with the cost of living crisis that has literally pushed households to the brink. You have no urgency, you have no vision, you have no capacity to grasp the severity of these problems in the lives of ordinary people. So by any fair judgment, Taoiseach, you are failing. And far too often the message from government to the people looking to you for solutions has been, suck it up, get on with it, shop around, you're on your own. Well, that's just not good enough. People expect so much more from those they elect and for those who they pay very handsomely to get the job done. Strike one against your failed government is without question on housing. Let's not forget this coalition came to office declaring that it would fix housing. A very bold statement, Taoiseach, that has not aged well. On your watch, the housing crisis has escalated to a housing disaster. So many of our people now struggle to put and keep a secure roof over their head. Housing prices continue to soar beyond the reach of ordinary workers and families. The dream of owning a home has become an impossibility for an entire generation. Rents keep going up and up. Renters are being ripped off every single month, robbed of their money, but also robbed of their futures. And young people in particular watch on as international funds build fancy apartment blocks in their neighbourhoods and they get to look at them. Yes, they get to look at them because they're never going to be able to afford to live in them. Generation rent is exploited in the here and now, and they face a very, very difficult and uncertain future. A new government on the side of renters would take action now to cut rents through a tax credit and legislate to ban rent increases for three years. But your do-nothing government sits on your hands and turns a blind eye. But worse than that, and you're at it again this afternoon, you brag now about your new shared equity scheme. A vintage Fianna Fáil move, if ever there was one. One designed to prop up, to prop up extortionate house prices and to saddle people with additional debt. And you boast that desperate people in desperation will reach for that measure. I find that nauseating. Here, here, here. The scourge of homelessness is back to record levels. People and families who never thought that they'd ever be in such a horrific situation find themselves in emergency accommodation if they can get emergency accommodation. Children still grow up in hotels, in B&Bs, robbed of a decent childhood. For any state that calls itself a republic, one child in homelessness is a scandal. But hundreds of children homeless is a damning indictment of those in power. And all the while, 
Thousands of households continue to languish on social housing waiting lists, desperate for the home in which they can build their life. And they watch on as thousands of homes are left vacant throughout the state. This housing disaster is an affront to the message of equality contained in the proclamation that hangs outside this chamber. So rather than lining up to vote confidence in yourselves, you might for once do some self-reflection because this housing disaster was created by you and it is sustained by you. And yet you remain wedded to the housing policies that created this mess in the first place. Policies that feather the nests of well-got developers, wealthy investors, big landlords, but also at the expense of ordinary people in housing need. And the dogs on the street know and can see that Minister O'Brien has failed abysmally. Let me suggest that he be at the front of the queue when this government packs its bags to go. It's time now for a housing minister who will implement policies that turn the tide with a housing strategy that really matches the scale of the challenge. Because housing can be fixed, there's no doubt in that. But it will require a new government with the right priorities making the right choices. Simply put, we need a government that builds public homes on public land at a massive scale and these must be homes that ordinary people can actually afford yeah, yeah. to rent yeah, yeah. or buy. Yeah, yeah. Strike two, as can court against this failed government, is in health. Under Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, so many are denied the medical care that they badly need. Our hospitals are chronically overcrowded and we have a never-ending trolley crisis. Waiting lists have ballooned to record levels. Children with conditions like scoliosis or spina bifida wait years for life-changing surgery. Mental health and disability services are on the floor as families and communities cry out for help. And despite all the promises of change, our frontline health staff continue to endure unacceptable working conditions. So the message from your government to the ordinary person is clear. Don't get sick don't need an operation or a treatment and for God's sake don't need support services because bad government policy ensures that you are not guaranteed the care you need when you need it. And when so many are denied vital health care, when a government indeed asks so many to live in agony and stress, how can anybody come into the doll? and argue that this government is doing a good job, let alone vote confidence in it. The truth is that you persist with policies that hollow out our public health system. That's the truth. Policies that prop up an inefficient at times, inequitable, unjust two-tier two -tier health service. And people are sick and tired, by the way, of government telling them that health care can't be fixed or solved. I don't accept that for a second, and I never will. A new government can deliver a health service that works for everyone. A single-tier national public health service where treatment is access-based on medical need, not on how much you earn. That's what people deserve. That's worth working for. That's worth fighting for. Strike three against the government is on the cost of living crisis. Households across the country are at breaking point and the threat of poverty is now very real, not only for those on low and fixed incomes, but for middle income households too. People simply don't know where they will find the money to pay soaring energy bills, put food on the table and fuel in the car. And the massive cost involving getting kids back to school in September has become literally a household crisis for many. Families struggle to afford the basics, but this government refuses to do what needs to be done. And with a bullheaded stubbornness, you refuse to introduce an emergency budget with measures to bring relief. It seems one-upmanship and facing down the opposition were more important to you than actually helping people. So you will instead wait for 12 weeks 
before intervening. And government ministers, you know, are very quick to, to homilise and to tell those of us in opposition that we don't have a monopoly on empathy for people who are suffering. Well, I agree with that. But a government, you see, doesn't get to stop at empathy. You don't get to empathise and then do nothing for people who are overwhelmed by a cost of living crisis that we haven't seen since the 1980s. It's the responsibility of government to act because empathy without help or action is just pity. And workers and families don't want your pity. They don't want the pity of government. They want solutions. They want relief. They want a government that is fit and capable of doing its job. So a housing disaster, a never-ending health crisis, a refusal to fully tackle the unprecedented cost of living crisis. Each of these failures individually would warrant the sacking of the lot of you. Mm -hmm. But these are three serious strikes against your government, Taoiseach. Three strikes and you're out. <coughs> Done, dusted, time to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I want to speak, uh, last count, Coyle, if I can, if I can speak directly to the independent TDs whose support keeps this weak and ineffective government in power. You see, we have all had ringside seats to witness the repeated incompetence of this coalition. Let me ask you, in all sincerity, is that good enough for the people that you represent? Can you honestly look your constituents in the eye and say to them that this confused, directionless government is the one to lead the country over the next two years? That's really the question. You have a chance to stand up and make a difference, and the ball is in your court. Will you stand with the workers and families you represent, or will you back a government that consistently lets them down? with your eyes wide open? That is the question each of you will answer with your vote today. Last count, Corla. Two years ago, people voted for change in massive numbers. They voted for a new direction, for a fresh start, for a better future. Workers and families, back Sinn Féin and others who, who promised change. And they wanted a party and people at Cabinet that would speak for them govern for them. But Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael and the Greens couldn't stomach that, couldn't stand the thought of a government led by a party that would prioritise the well-being of ordinary people over vested interests, the insiders and golden circles. So what did you do? So what did you do? You clubbed together to stop change. And you know, in doing that, you planted the seeds of your own demise and your government's failure. Because, make no mistake about it, this is a government that was born out of necessity and not ambition. Formed out of a self-serving desire to keep things the same rather than to drive progress. Cobbled together to defend the interests of those at the top rather than ordinary people, Taoiseach, the very definition of cynicism. Here, here. Cynical yeah. politics yeah. and a cynical yeah. government. Yeah. And so it is farcical. And so, last count, Corla, it is farcical, Taoiseach, that you propose to hand the keys of the Taoiseach's office back to the Taunishta in December to carry on as normal. Because it's very clear that Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael have been in power for far too long, and by God, families and workers throughout the land have paid a heavy price for that. More and more people see that we need a change of government, not just a change of Taoiseach. Your coalition is stuck in the past, a government that's unable to respond to the progressive, positive, modern demand for change that's sweeping across uh, Ireland. I'm an optimist. I, I don't believe that Ireland is a basket case. Far from it. Yeah, yeah. I believe we have everything that we need to build a new Ireland. We can house our people. 
Thank we can have first-class public health and education Thank services. You, we can create and drive prosperity. We can also unite you, our country. You, were, you gave leeway no, 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 with no, government. I, I have one. I have. No, no. Please, you gave a minute to government. Thank you, last count Corley. But here's what I know, and I'll finish with this, last count Corley. Here's what I know for sure, and without a shadow of a doubt. A government led by Fianna Fáil or Fine Gael will never allow that fair Thank and you. equal Ireland to be born. You've Thank shown you. us that time and again. Workers and families deserve better, and now is the moment for change. Taoiseach, your time is up. Thank you. The Thank people you. have had enough. You and your ministers must go make way for a new government that will roll up their sleeves, get the job done with energy, with creativity, and create that stronger, fairer Ireland. We're way over time.